guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a topic video on my pick, uh, pick of the weeks for 2014. I'm going to go over every week and talk about all my pick of the weeks that happened throughout the year. You know, highlighting what books got pick of the week the most, Marvel or DC, indie stuff, and I have the, I, the exact numbers of how many pick of the weeks Marvel had, how many pick of the weeks DC had. I've been logging this throughout the whole year to make a fun topic video for the end of the year. But if you guys have any future topic videos, please recommend in the comments uh, below. If I answer them, that means a couple of weeks will either be on Comic Uno or Comic Frontline because I double dose my topic videos. Uh, usually for Comic Frontline, I have them every Sunday, and for Comic Uno, I have them every Friday with my comic book reviews. So be sure to uh, comment away and recommend a way for a topic video. But let's talk about this topic and let's go through the pick of the weeks. So let's start out in also order, not really in a Marvel or DC or indie order. Um, it's just it, like say Miles Morales got a lot, I name all the Miles Morales it got. Um, so I would say it goes in series order. First is Superior Foes of Spider-Man. This is only got pick of the week because there was really not a lot of books out that week. But this was a fun series overall. Um, I did drop it before the ending. Um, it was fun, but I do think it overran itself. I think it would have been more of a fun mini series, like a six issue mini series. But it did have a bit too many issues for me, so I did drop it. But it was a fun ride for you know what it was. Now, here's all the Miles Morales stuff. There's a lot. Miles pretty much almost won the year for me. There's so many great Miles stories out there and Ultimate Universe stories, so let's get started. First is Cataclysm Ultimate Comics Spider-Man Issue 3. I'm pretty sure this was the issue where um, Miles' father finds out that he's Spider-Man. And uh, the, the whole Spider-Man stories in Cataclysm were great, but th this was definitely the best issue. Next is Ultimate Comics Spider-Man issue 200. Um, a great celebration of Peter and Miles. It mixed both supporting casts very well. Um, and just remembering Peter in a great way. So again, I think this really celebrated not just Peter Parker, not just Miles, but just mixed it very well, which I think the Miles series has already done very well, um, mixing both casts. Um, Miles Morales issue 1. Um, this is where we find out that Peter Parker is still alive great issue. Issue 2, continuing it, we get to see more of that. Then we have issue 3, which was also pick of the week. Um, issue 4 was also pick of the week. And then skipped a, a month. We got issue 6, which is pick of the week, and issue 7. So you can see that Miles Morales has dominated a lot here. So those are all the pick of the weeks for Miles Morales. Now we're moving on to Daredevil. Um, Daredevil got a couple pick of the weeks during uh, the year. Daredevil issue 35, um, which was the second to last issue for the end and finding out that this villain wanted to kidnap Foggy and kill him. So it was a pretty interesting story. Um, issue 36 was the final ending where we find out that Foggy didn't die and that uh, Matt had to move to San Francisco. That was issue 36. And then we have Daredevil issue 1, which is a really great issue of Daredevil getting used to San Francisco. And uh, I liked how he, how he explained the landscape of San Francisco and how he wasn't used to it and he was so used to New York. So issue 1 was very fun. So those are all the Daredevils for the year. Um, only a couple all-new X-Men. All-new X-Men definitely did better in 2013 did, than it did in 2014, but still a very solid series. Um, so all-new X-Men issue 22 did get pick of the week. Uh, that was the beginning of Trials of Jean Grey, um, which honestly was a kind of forgettable story arc looking back at it. Um, I was like, oh yeah, Trials of Jean Grey, what was that about again? <laughs> um, honestly, don't remember. Now it's like coming back to me. It's like, oh yeah, they don't like Jean Grey, and they don't care it's the past Jean Grey. They just don't like Jean Grey in general. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a, a solid story when it came out. Um, next is All New X-Men issue 26, which is the last part of Trials of Jean Grey. And I really did enjoy this because we, we get to see a new power from Jean Grey. And for me, I thought that was an interesting story. I know some people were like half on half on it. It's like, oh, do we really need another power? I thought it made this uh, Jean Grey a bit more uh, unique. Um, next is All New X-Men issue 33. Um, I remember this was a bit of a slower week, but uh, this is where Jean meets Miles and they go to the Ultimate Universe, which that story arc is still going on. And uh, I don't know what's going to wrap up, but hopefully, you know, it wraps up well. All right, next is Earth 2 Annual Issue 2. Um, I really enjoyed this issue a lot. This is when we get the reveal that Thomas Wayne is 
Batman and the whole story behind it. This is one of my favorite issues of the year, and if you haven't been reading Earth 2, it's a great series, and at this point, this was really when it started to become really great. Um, next is JLA issue 12, um, and this is the start or between where Star, um, Stargirl and Martian and Manhunter have to go into everyone's brain to try to figure out what's going on with Forever Evil and how they're all trapped in, I think it was Firestorm's brain. And also I had JLA issue 13 that continues that story. Um, I really like this because we go into Stargirl's origin story and they pretty much stick with it. Uh, so it's a really great issue if you like Stargirl and Martian Manhunter. I thought there was some great characterization and they have a really fun, um, a fun friendship and hopefully they'll develop even more in Just League United in, um, 2015. Um, next is Cataclysm, The Ultimate Last Stand, Issue 5, really well done issue, uh, the ending of Cataclysm, which feels like forever ago, but, uh, supposedly this was supposed to, supposed to end the Ultimate Universe, but it didn't, um, but it was cool, because Kitty Pride saved the day, and she became huge, but she was able to phase, uh, the planet. Um, so I thought it was cool that Kitty Pride saved the day. And um, overall, even though it didn't really have that many consequences, I do think mutants should have been a bit more uh, a bit more accepted after that. They weren't, but you know, still, it was a very good issue at the time. <laughs> Um, next is actually another favorite issue of the year, which is Starlight Issue 1. Even though the series as a whole wasn't, you know, perfect, uh, I think it did get slower, the momentum, and then had a really strong last issue. Um, Issue 1 blew my mind. I thought it had all the right emotional beats, and you really cared about the character, but then they didn't really do much with that um, as the series continued, which is a shame, because Issue 1 had a lot of heart. Next is Superior Spider-Man issue 30, which is the only Superior Spider-Man issue I have on this list. It was the last issue. Um, as much as I think Superior Spider-Man was a big thing for Marvel, I didn't love it. I liked it, but I obviously like seeing Peter Parker a bit more, but there's other people that do love Superior Spider-Man. Um, but I, I did like this ending. Um, now looking back at it, uh, back at it, which is interesting to do this list now to look back at these issues. Um, I do think that it was a bit rushed, the story arc, uh, but hopefully they're going to conclude some of that stuff in Spider-Verse. Alright, next is Batman Eternal issue 1, which was actually a really great issue, which is strange, because Batman Eternal has been really up and down this series, and it's only had two pick of the weeks. Other than that, and also that's the only weekly uh, series that had pick of the week, uh, and out of what, how many issues that came out, like, oh... 80 issues, I would say, and there was only been two pick of the weeks throughout this whole entire time. Obviously, that says something. Batman Eternal actually was a really good setup. Uh, Batman Eternal 3, Stephanie Brown's return. Loved it. They stick with the origins, and it was a great story. Too bad they haven't really been uh, utilizing Stephanie Brown in uh, Batman Eternal, which upsets me, because issue 3 was really well done. All right, let's move on to Miss Marvel issue one. Uh, great, great issue and a uh, great series. One of my favorites of 2014. And uh, hopefully in 2015, the um, series will be even better and it'll get even more pick of the weeks. But issue one blew my mind. Camilla is such a fun character, and I've been saying this, she is the new Peter Parker for generations. Um, next is Miss Marvel issue one, uh, issue four, and this is where she's getting used to her powers a bit more, and uh, we're really learning about the power side of Miss Marvel. Then we have Miss Marvel issue seven, which is where she teams up with Wolverine. This is so much fun because Miss Marvel fangirls, and Wolverine's okay with that. So issue seven was a lot of fun. All right, now we're moving on to Smallville Lantern issue two, and uh, this is actually the best Smallville story arc, and I think Smallville is a very under the radar um, series, uh, especially because it is a digital first series. So I definitely recommend uh, Smallville, especially Smallville Lantern, and also Smallville Lantern issue three was a pick of the week. Also, both really epic Green Lantern stories, and if you miss epic Green Lantern stories, you might want to go back to that. Alright, next is another series that has blown my mind in 2014, which is Invincible. And it started with issue 111, where Robot betrays Invincible. So, I think that's great. Uh, issue 111 and issue 112 were pick of the week. So, yeah, pretty pretty good stuff there. Uh, can't wait to see where Invincible goes, because I really do like where the story's going there. 
All right, next we have Electra issue three, and this is a really good issue where we get to see Electra go through her memories in while she's drowning, pretty much. Uh, so what I love about Electra in general, and it's a shame it's ending because I do think this is a very under the radar uh, series that a lot of people didn't pick up, which is a shame because I think it's a good series. Uh, Electra issue three, uh, and what I like about Electra is that you go into her mind, and issue three highlights that. Um, and issue four, which is also my pick of the, another pick of the week, so it's issue three and four. But with issue four, uh, another great just go into her mind um, and trying to fight. Uh, I think his name is Crow Cap. I don't know, something Crow. <laughs> but um, overall, Electro, um, really great series. All right, so we got a couple back girls coming up. Batgirl issue 33, which is the second to last issue for Batgirl, um, you know, second to last issue for Gal Simone's run, uh, and it was just a really good setup to Batgirl issue 34, which is also, um, pick of the week. Both these issues, I think, did a great job at ending, um, the Batgirl story for Gail Simone and, uh, bringing the Birds of Prey back in an interesting way. Uh, last Batgirl pick of the week is Batgirl Future Zen issue 1. Uh, this is a really great issue. One of my favorites of the year is Batgirl Future Zen, um, where we get to see Stephanie, uh, Cassandra, and I'm trying to think of who else we, we saw as a Batgirl. Uh, Stephanie, Cassandra, and I think it was Lucas's Fox's sister, Lucius, Fo uh, Lucius is the dad. The one who's Batwing. I don't read Batwing, but, um, her, his, his sister, um, is uh, one of the Batgirls here too, and it's just such a good story of, that was really truly the end of Gail Simone's run. Um, and bring Stephanie Brown as a Batgirl, uh, I died. Uh, such a good issue. Next is the only Amazing Spider-Man issue that was Pick of the Week, which is a shame, because you guys know I'm a big Spider-Man fan, but that was Amazing Spider-Man issue 4, and uh, Silk made her appearance there, and I thought this was a really well done issue, because I think Silk has a lot of potential, and hopefully she'll have even more potential with her own series uh, next year. Um, next is Grim Fairy Tale, uh, Grim Tales of Terror, issue one. This was a really, really haunting issue, if you like horror. Uh, this was definitely the best issue of Tales of Terror, in my opinion, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Next is Revival Issue 23, and I'll also say Revival Issue 25. They're both Pick of the Weeks, and I think if I was reading this series beforehand, there would be more Pick of the Weeks from Revival, but I, I caught up with the Revival this year and was able to read single issues after, and I love the series. It's become one of my favorites, and I uh, can't wait to re review it even more single issue next year. Next is Just Justice League issue 33, which is a shame this is my only pick of the week for Justice League, because I think this series has improved a lot in 2014. Um, but Justice League issue 33 is with uh, powering and really seeing who powering is, which I was so, so happy to see. You know, I think Jessica Cruz is an interesting character that hopefully they utilize more in 2015. Uh, learning more about her family, learning more about her. I think we got a glimpse of that in that issue, and hopefully we get to see even more. Uh, another one of one of my favorites here is Edge of Spider Verse issue two. Um, this is Spider Gwen's first appearance. I can't wait for the Spider Gwen series coming out. Uh, this is one of my favorite issues of the year. Loved it. It's it's such a unique spin on the Spider mythos and uh, bringing Gwen Stacy back and just doing it with a grand slam here. That's Edge of Spider Verse issue two. Next is Superman Future Zen issue one. Uh, Superman Future Zen uh, surprised me. This is, you know, there's two Future Zen stories I thought were really well done, and this was one of them. And it's showing different people that got Superman's powers and how they handled it. And uh, I thought that was a really well done story, uh, the way they the way they did it here. So Superman Future Zen. Next is Death of Wolverine issue three. As a Kitty Pryde fan. This is a freaking awesome <laughs> issue. Um, bringing back who Kitty Pride is, bringing back a lot of story from Kitty, Kitty Pride and the Wolverine May series, which is my favorite story, one of my favorite stories of all time. And uh, it really brings it back here and um, it lets Kitty have her real farewell to Wolverine. Um, beautiful artwork, and again, just bringing back to that um, great mini series that I don't think people should forget about and they don't hear. Next is Earth 2 World's End issue 1, which is actually another weekly. Uh, yeah, Earth 2 went 
went down after that. But uh, this was actually really w a well done first issue. It explained what Earth 2 was for new readers and it also progressed the story for old readers. It said, this is the reason you should be excited for World's End. We're not gonna like keep your anticipation after this, but this is the reason you should be excited. Or issue 1 was actually really well done and it's a shame that they didn't really keep that moment uh, momentum. Alright, next is Bionic Woman Season 4, Issue 2, which I just learned was a miniseries. Upsetting, but this was such a good series. Hopefully they continue it as an ongoing. Um, if you like having the nostalgia of Bi Bionic Woman, but also having a unique um, new take on it, read this miniseries. It's really well done, and uh, I think you get to see the real Jamie Somers here, which I don't think Dynamite had done in the past with their old series. Uh, next two is Green Arrow issue 36 and Green Arrow issue 37. This series has blown my mind. I think it would be on more 2014 lists if, um, if the series wasn't so late in the game, but you know, maybe 2015 we'll see more of this, but the Arrow writers took over the series. I think the series had a nice blend of New 52, Pre-New 2, and um, Arrow. And you add Felicity, you have Mia Dearden, which I never, never expected Mia Dearden to be in the new 52, but I love it. Uh, and just great stories, great action. Can't wait to see where Green Arrow goes in 2015. Next is Robin Hood Ongoing Issue 4. I thought this was a really great issue just because uh, I was introduced with the Zenoscope universe because of Robin Hood. And uh, this issue did a great job at, you know, making these two characters that we, we really love seeing come together, um, Red and um, Robin Hood, and they're kind of best friends, but they're kind of not best friends. They're always fighting each other, so this this was a really good setup issue, and you get to see uh, those two interact. Next is Teen Titans issue 5. This really surprised me. It was a four-star issue, but uh, it was really good because I think we get to see the personalities of the Teen Titans again, finally. Uh, and it, it's starting to go in a better direction. Is it my Teen Titans yet? No, but they're kind of in character. And I like that issue because of it. Uh, last uh, but not least is this week's pick of the week, which uh, was Graveyard Shift Issue 1. A really fun, unique take on vampires. And I'm looking forward to the romance and the drama. And it's just a really well done story. And uh, I think this series has a lot of potential. So let's do the roundup. Of course, uh, next week there's also technically another one that you can have pick of the week for, but it was like literally like the 30th or whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm doing this video today because then once I do the video, it'll be January. So that's why I did the video this week. Um, so let's round it off. Marvel had 25 pick of the weeks. DC had 16. Image had 6. Zetoscope had 3. Dynamite had won. So Marvel did win this year. Um, so Marvel beat DC this year for me. Um, but we got a good mix of indies in there too, which I'm happy to see. So this was my pick of the week video. Tell me all your thoughts on these comics. What were your favorite comics of the year? Tell me in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys later. It's Scott, this is Comic Uno. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for Comic Uno and the end situations. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below. Don't um, don't forget to check out my comic book, like Father Like Daughter, and don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father Like Daughter. I'll see you guys later.